Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. We're going to talk about the comic book industry and how great the comic book industry is doing. It's doing so well that many, many artists are coming out and complaining that they're not getting paid for 45, 60, 90 days mm -hmm. from, uh, I guess, what you consider to be mainstream publishers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes it was you had to wait a little bit, but this is kind of like... It's getting worse. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do believe that these publishers are struggling. They're juggling the books. They are probably waiting to get paid by Diamond or some other distributor or something, but there's definitely something up. A lot of people reporting on this. Uh, Rich Johnson, Bling Cool reporting on it. I know Heidi McDonald has done stuff on it. And I she know Aaron Sparrow posted a tweet about Aaron it. Aaron Sparrow, yes, uh, former Darkwing Duck writer Aaron Sparrow was saying that he's hearing a lot that people are basically out there doing GoFundMes now, trying to, you know, and look, I, I get things aren't great. Things have never been fantastic for most people working in comics, but I'm like, you can't sit there and tell me. We've done so many videos about comics and the utter state of comics and, and why we left mainstream comics and, you know, hint, it had a lot to do with the financials. Uh, it really yeah. did. And, um, and just how weird it is that, that uh, you know, people working in comics put up with these conditions just to be able to say, hey, I work in comics. Well, it's, it's true you because know? I know a lot of people just want to do it. Like, you do, then you get there and you're like, holy crap, this sucks. <laughs> you know? so. Yeah, and here's what's weird about this. And again, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to gloat. I, I know how it is. I've been in situations and we're talking 10, 15 years ago where there are publishers that were actually bankrolled by major corporations. We had to fight them to get paid for things. And a lot of times, you know, these publishers will just run up a bill Oh yeah, we'll, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. And, and you know, I mean, I, I went for multiple months not getting paid at uh, one company owned by Diamond. Uh, IDW, I had to chase them for money. And now we're finding out that IDW has financial problems. Oh, yeah. shocker. Shocker, because I was, you know, and again, I don't have any problem with the people I worked with at IDW, but I had to chase them. I think it was four months to get paid for a couple, couple of covers. And that was with an agent. And that was back in like 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. That was before it came out that they were having like major financial problems. But this is a sign of, a, of companies not doing very well. Meanwhile, again, not to uh, not to brag. I'm not trying to brag here, but I'm just gonna say like our artists, we actually pay them weekly or monthly whenever they invoice us, you yeah. know, and we have done it that way. Um, in fact, I'm, in some cases, I will pay people incrementally for different stages of completion. But nobody's waiting 45, 60, 90 days to get paid. No. I, would not, I would not do that to somebody. And honestly, this looks like a lot of money, but this actually is going to pay for the next book, yeah. for book two. Whatever is beyond the cost of book one is going directly into paying artists on book two. Yeah, and that's that's the thing, too. I think a lot of these publishers are biting off a lot more than they can chew, and they're commissioning more work than they can pay for, and how we are going to do it, at least with our company, or try to Go, try to going forward is basically you know if we've got the revenue to front for the next book we take the risk you know we pay the creatives to to produce the book and if it doesn't turn a profit that's that's basically you know we made a bad decision i guess and that's that's kind of how it works basically neon made a bad decision it's basically neon made a bad decision if it because if, if it, it doesn't do well it's probably because i told him not to do it and he did it anyway <laughs> That does happen sometimes. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's let's talk about this and the, the economics of comics. Uh, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 282, almost 283,000 subs. Uh, thank you so much for the support. We do talk about comics. Uh, we work in comics. I guess currently we work in comics. It doesn't feel like we do because we're we're doing independent stuff. Yeah. So we're not in knee deep in all the the politics and the drama and the scene and all that. But we've learned enough over the years to try to do comics smarter. We actually have our own publisher. Or, I mean, we are. Our own we are publisher. a company. Yes, we're an actual so company. So when I think about like pro comics, technically I could say we are. Yeah, we are. We're, it we're just, a publisher. It just, it's hard to wrap my head around that. We have, we have an actual office and we're an actual business and we do a lot of things. We but pay we, actual taxes. We, oh, God. We pay actual taxes. We do a lot of things. Um, so for me to hear these stories, it's like, oh, yeah. yeah you know, because I'm so used to doing business with – I'm not trying to oh – God, I'm trying not to sound like a dick. I'm so used to doing business with people that are actually business people that when I have to read about how business works in comics – it's like, oh, sweet Jesus, I need some alcohol for this. Because mm -hmm. any other industry, this shit would not fly. No. I'm, I'm just saying. like it, But comics people dish it out and put up with 
a lot of crap that would not work in any other industry. And then you wonder why you get some of the uh, some of the personalities in the yeah. comic book industry that you get. And I think it's because, you know, you get what you pay for. I was going to say that too. Get what you pay or what you didn't pay for. Or what you didn't pay for. And and in some cases, people want to work in comics so badly that they take a bad deal. I mean, you know, um, now the bigger publishers, Marvel and DC, I would like to think pay more regularly. I know they usually pay people, uh, you know, weekly or monthly, depends on your deal. The royalties, that's a whole nother situation, but. This is obviously so bad. They have part two also. Yes, there are two parts. There are two parts to this, two days yes. apart. Yes. So let's, 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 let's talk about this. Um, so this is, uh, again, Rich Johnson put this up a couple of days ago. I saw it making the rounds. Kind of wondered what was up because I saw Aaron's tweet and I haven't really been paying too much attention. But this is a we're actually out there getting you know, we're matters. actually kind of trying to work on getting our own stuff off the ground and actually making money. But uh, so Will Robson is a comic book artist. He worked on Great Lakes Avengers, uh, Big Trouble in Little China, Spider Man, Deadpool, Spider Ham, Secret Warriors, Spawn, Fantastic Four, etc., 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 etc. Right. Has it become industry standard to pay creators ridiculously late for their work? I've struggled all year with all the large companies. So this is this is large companies. Mm -hmm. It's not the small ones. Well, clearly he works on all the big titles. Yeah. Right. Uh, to get paid on the agreed time. I'm talking months late. It's sad how nervous I am to even talk about this publicly in fear of being blacklisted for future yeah, work. You know, this is something I brought up before, and I get so sick of it, is this whole idea that if you see bad behavior, that if you call it out, you're the bad guy, you'll get blacklisted. It's not professional of you to call that out and say so, but it wasn't professional to people to do what they were doing in the first place, you know? Uh, I've heard uh, so many horror stories from other freelance creators recently about getting or fighting for their paycheck, and I need to vent this out, hopefully uh, raise some awareness. Um, and he's basically talking about, you know, five to 10 weeks late on payment from major publishers. We've been there. Uh, we've been there. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's like, how am I supposed to do Christmas if I'm not getting paid, you know, for work I did in October by Christmas? Uh, 10 to 15 hour shifts, five to seven days a week. Mm -hmm. I believe to hit, it. To hit the ridiculous industry standard deadlines. And again, we, the books we do, we do graphic novels and they basically, I mean, we like to have them done by a certain time, but they get done when they get done. We're not doing a monthly schedule. But we've done month. that whole thing where you've done oh, yeah. oh, uh, just God. on a comic and then you had a day job too. Yeah. You would do 10, 12 page, hours a page and then you have a day job and it was, you know, constant every day of the week. Yeah. So I've had, I've had cases where, uh, you know, especially back when I did coloring because colorists a lot of times get, get shat on. You know, you definitely do, but they'll, they'll dump something on you a couple of days before it's supposed to go to press. And it's like, here, color this, you know, 30 something page mm -hmm. book. And you got, uh, you got you know, 24 hours go pretty much. That's more than enough time. You know, if you don't sleep, that's, that's more than enough time. You all nighters, I have done. done it. And, you know, I mean, once in a while I didn't mind, but yeah, I mean, I know, I know how it is. So I'm not, I'm not sitting here like, ah, suckers, you know, whatever. I'm like. The comic book industry, everybody keeps saying how good things are in comics. The comic sales are great and the comics are fine. If comics are fine and comics are self-sustaining and there's plenty of money flowing, then why is everybody having a hard time getting paid? Because this is what struggling companies do. Any other industry, you'd be looking at this and being like, this company is about ready to F and fold. Well, would you work someplace and then work there all weekend and then, okay, you'll get your payment in like, you know, four to five weeks, maybe? No, I actually worked uh, one time. I worked for a commercial printer and he actually came in and I, I get sometimes, you know, people have, you know, problems or whatever, but he was basically, he basically came in and said, Hey guys, uh, this guy defaulted on a big print job. I can't make payroll for like two weeks. And some people walked because they're like, I need the weekly paycheck. That's why I'm mm -hmm. here. It's not like I'm a contractor. And the thing is, is when everybody is a contractor, you know, they can get away with because they're basically paying a vendor. They're not paying an employee. You don't have the rights that an actual like salaried employee would have. Mm -hmm. I mean, the flip side is you have the the flexibility, you know, to go to, do other things, to yeah. go do other things or whatever. But they're basically like, well, you know what? If we burn you out and toss you aside, we'll just go get, you know, five more wannabes. Well, that's what they've done for years. We used, to, I know when I met you, we talked about that, how they would just burn people out and then be like, okay, next you're you getting yeah. a few years out of you next. Uh, I work hard to hit my deadlines, pay me, and to clarify, I'm not talking about editors being the issue. My editors are wonderful. That was the same problem I had at IDW, especially. I like the people I worked with. I yeah, did. it wasn't their fault. And they're, none of them are there now, by the way. But but the people I worked with, I liked them quite a bit, but like they they couldn't release the funds. It's the same thing that happened 
when I was a, a marketing manager for a company and they decided they were going to button everything down, like I could put a purchase order in, I could, I could turn in invoices, but I couldn't actually release the funds. The, the accountant had to release the funds. And that's the problem when you work for a corporation. Uh, here we have Zach Thompson. I've had two books completely fall apart this year because of late payments, one of which took me over a year of dedicated research to even script. Said, this, wait till you read this. Said publisher then optioned one of my books without telling me of the team at the time. How the hell is that even legal? And still said they couldn't pay. It's, they optioned it, got money for it, and then still didn't pay them. It's December, and a lot of creators are heading into Christmas with thousands owed to them and no real recourse to get paid for their work. It's disgusting. It's clear to me that our industry is in a state of huge transition and a lot of smaller publishers may not make it to the other side. It sounds like it's not the smaller publishers. Like I said, we are mom and pops. We pay our people like weekly, bi-weekly, uh, you know, as they're, and that, that's the way I want to move going forward. We might not do as many books, mm -mm. but I guarantee you the people working on those books are going to get paid. We're not even going to green light a book unless we know we have the money to bankroll the book. Right. That's, that's how it works. And then that crowd funder, those pre-sales pay for the next project. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a uh, Joe, I think it's Kionis, uh, waited recently over a year, a full year on one publisher before getting paid and currently still waiting payment running on six months, uh, from a second prominent publisher who has largely ghosted me relating the two separate covers I crafted for them last summer. Is it IDW? That <laughs> was IDW. You know of another artist who's drawn several full issues and covers for a mini series they were working on without even one paycheck, yet their publisher will come knocking for the next cover, the next issue, then threaten to move on to another artist. Yes, that I believe completely. That's, that's absolute bullshit, but this is completely, that sounds about right. The reason I worked those all nighters, uh, one, I felt like I was obligated to the team to do it because if I didn't do it, the book didn't get done. But also I knew that the phone wasn't going to ring, you know, the email, the email wasn't going to ring. Um, I wouldn't get mail. Oh, wait, he names it. First publisher I won't name because I think it was an honest mistake. The second publisher is Valiant. Wow. Okay. And then they reached out to Valiant and they didn't give her, they didn't reply. They didn't reply either. Oh, holy shit. Uh, yeah, they, they do largely. Oh, wow. Look at that. That keeps going. Tara Phillips. I've been waiting months for a publishing company to pay me for uh, two cover licenses. Uh, Shannon Wright, you're unfortunately not alone. Again, this is not a new thing. This is going back to, again, I haven't done any work for any, uh, mainstream publishers in like seven or eight years, but I was having problems getting paid and, um, that was before it came out. That they were Sounds having. much worse than it used to be. Yeah, it is worse because the money, I'm sorry, guys. Here, the money's I, not I, I, you know, they're like, I'm right now in the same situation. Even considered recently quitting comics because I cannot mentally continue like this. That's what happened to we me. We need to be paid 50 page book. Yeah, that's why. One of the reasons, big reasons why Neon quit doing comics professionally was because he was like, you know, it's not worth the hassle. Um, we had bills. We had a family. We had a moral obligation. I was in the worst physical health of my life trying to keep up with deadlines and a full-time job mm -hmm. you know yeah, that's I, when you had ruptured discs in your back i had anything. i had back issues i packed on a lot of weight um my blood pressure was through the roof yeah it was bad and uh it was it was like it was literally killing me slowly but it was it was Other killing people me. large and small publishers are in trouble with a specific publisher that i may not name um owes me fifteen hundred dollars some of it is more than 60 days late holy shit at this time next week though the late they'll be close to four thousand dollars I've had to take on way more work than I can handle to try to make it up financially. It's a real struggle right now. Uh, this right here is why I can't stress how important it is to have an agent. Um, well, you had an agent. I had what? Didn't matter. Marco, I'm sorry. I actually had an agent going to bat for me, trying to get money out of publishers before. And if the purse strings are not being loosened, there's nothing they can do about it either. I mean, they can yell at them or whatever. Actually, I think it just took just hounding them and I mean, you might get a little further, I think, quicker than people who don't. I mean, I'll be honest, but it, it doesn't, it's not like the magic, you know, here's my, I, you know, I choose agent and you play that card. Yeah, people you know? think that the agent is a, a catch all for everything. And actually, you know, I'll tell you the truth. In our case, in particular, the agent actually complicated things and cost us deals. Oh, no, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. The agents we talked to, we went through so much shit, then they, they put you through the ringer. And then, frankly, what they want to do is you get a deal and then they'll they'll, they'll broker it. Like, they weren't going to go find you deals they didn't have to. Yeah. They were like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try a little bit, but mostly you're supposed to do the work. But if you did anything they didn't want you to do or you decided you're going to try something else, like, well, oh, no, you can't do that. Then they get pissed at you. That's why we were we were uncontrollable. So they didn't like us because we wouldn't we wouldn't just toe the line and sit back and wait for them to get to us after you know passing other I think other opportunities on to other their 
preferred clients. Let's put it that way. Just just saying, you you know, you don't need an agent to make money in comics. You can actually get your book done without uh, an agent. Um, if you're not on Twitter all day yelling. If you're not on oh, wait, Twitter. You are on Twitter all day yelling. Never mind. <laughs> I like Twitter now. It's a lot more fun. All right, uh, is Alex. This is part two. This is part two. Alex DeCampi. This is mm-hmm. after uh, yeah, Alex DeCampi. Alex DeCampi uh, said this is after Aftershock Comics. Uh, they owe friends of mine tens of thousands, and I've been doling out contact details of California lawyers for the arts like it was Christmas candy. This is shameful behavior. People need to know. Yeah, but you have to have the money to pay for the California lawyers. That's what they don't understand, too. You can, you can, you can go after them with lawyers. But you still have to pay for the lawyers. Like- well, yeah, what happens a lot of times is lawyers, you know, it, it, it's hard. A lot of people get screwed over because they can't afford the lawyer. And there are very few lawyers that specialize in this kind of thing. And I can tell you that the ones that do specialize in this kind of a thing uh, aren't cheap. They're not cheap. They're good, but uh, people don't have the resources to be able to to utilize them. I will agree with them on one thing. It's hmm. amazing I agree with them on something. Um, I guarantee that troubled companies pay the loudest creators first. Yep. Yes. Yep. This is true. Everybody's afraid to say anything because they're afraid they won't get a gig again. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. It might bite you in the ass. I mean, flat out. You, you would get labeled as difficult, even though you have every right to be mad. And I think that's, that, that's back that thing I said where they talk about unprofessional behavior as they're demonstrating unprofessional behavior. But, yeah, the ones who, who complain the loudest get paid. I'm, Neon knows that. <laughs> I, can, I can be very loud. I can be very persuasive. Neon can maybe go to, goes to a site like Bleeding Cool and says, hey, guess what? Jemson's not paying their people. I, you know, that might have happened. I don't remember. I, I've been doing uh, maybe internet possibly, stuff for maybe. a long time. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is uh, look, you can't sit there and tell me. You can't sit there and tell me that comics are fine. Everything's fine. It's all, it's all fine. fine. Here. It's all fine here. Comics have never been better. They literally, like, uh, you know, Heidi McDonald put an article up. Comics have never been better. If you count manga sales, if you count back issue sales, if, if you, you count uh, crowdfunders, if you count crowdfunders, yeah, uh, people are still buying comics. But the problem is, is that I think a lot of these smaller publishers, especially uh, not doing so well. And a lot of you know, the companies, you know, look, Disney and Warner are both battening down the hatches. They own Marvel and DC. They're going to cut corners when they can cut corners. And the know? thing is, they can say, okay, well, just don't work with those people. But you're talking like the big publishers, too, now. You know, yeah. you can't just be like, well, don't work with them. Well, who are you supposed to work with then? Because it sounds like pretty much all of them aren't paying on time. Us. You can work with us. But, you know, a lot of you don't want anything to do with us ever since we took to YouTube. Well, do you want to work with some of these people? No, I do not. Because some of these people are are a, a huge part of the problem. Um, not necessarily people in this article. We're no, 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 no. I'm just saying in general. With, Better clarify that. With, uh, you know, the comic book industry and the whisper networks and the blacklisting and all the bullshit that goes with it. Uh, The drama that we don't want anything to do that we've actually been talking about, calling out for years. And that was another reason why uh, I walked away from mainstream comics is because of the the bullshit that goes along with it. Not only do you not get paid. comics are the worst, too. Oh, there's a lot of backbiting. Not only do you not get paid much, not only do you not get paid on time, but then you have to put up with all of your supposed, supposed friends going and getting deals for themselves and their friends and not telling you anything. It is, is literally like all these people chasing crumbs, you know, and it's just so not worth it. My personal favorite was IEW when, you know, you found out after the fact that everybody else had gone and got themselves deals and deliberately did not tell you (laughs) about IEW because they were trying to keep you out. And then you went and got it in your, you went on your neon. He's like, screw you. And he went and got it in there on his own. Then, then some of those people actually called me up to work with me when I was there and they were there. It's interesting how that mm-hmm. works. But yeah, comics is, is just, it's, it's sad. It's a really sad business. And I think, I'm going to tell you the truth. I think a lot of the hatred toward uh, YouTubers that call out the state of the industry right now, um, I don't think it's all political. I think a lot of it is just the sadness, the desperation, the anxiety. I mean, you well, can you hear want it. change. You want things to change. And if no one calls it out or puts a light on it, it's never going to change. If you don't like, you know, shine a light into the, to the dark hole, you know, <laughs> chase everything out of it that's nasty, nothing's going to be able to be changed. Okay, don't, I'm, I, don't use that analogy because ma- Neon's mouth's like wide open. There's like, a what? gynecology joke in there. No, There's no, a, I mean, you know what I mean. You shine light into the darkness and then, you know. Shine and, a light into the hole and chase out the nasty before you go in. That's right. <laughs> I didn't mean to make it weird. <laughs> I made it weird. So you know what I mean? It's no. like nothing can change if no one acknowledges there's a problem. It depresses me. 
It literally depresses, like everybody's like, hey, everybody, let's all be upbeat about the comic book industry and let's all, you know, kumbaya and all this stuff. And again, I have to change my mindset. Like, I'm like, okay, am I talking about business business with other business people working in other areas of media? Or am I talking about comic books, which is like, like a bunch of kids playing with Monopoly money, you know, and the little takes, like, it's a totally different thing. Why are you insulting children like that? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, it doesn't feel like real business. And again, when I, you know, we do a lot of things, we don't talk about most of what we do here online, but literally every other thing we do, every other industry that we work in is more professional than the comic book industry. Mm -hmm. That's true. It's not even an in, like, what is it? It's just a bunch of people doing, you know, work for publishers they hope are going to be in business next week. They hope are going to pay them. And this is nothing new. This has been going on for years. <laughs> so they chased out all these people. Remember they had the Whisper Networks chase people out so they could have the biscuit. But it's a rotten biscuit. There's hardly anything there. And you don't, and it, you know, it's hard. Hardly any crumbs fall off of that biscuit. Now you're breaking your teeth and you can't afford dental to fix your teeth. And just like, I just, in some ways it's karma. But in other, uh, ways, yeah. in other ways, though, I mean, nothing's going to change if people don't call it out. So, you know, unfortunately, people that do call it out usually get, you know, labeled as troublemakers and they don't get calls anymore. Why but would you bullshit. want? Why would you want to get called to work in this industry? Exactly. Why the fuck would you want? To go bust your ass for months and not get paid. What are you afraid of? We broke it down. What are you afraid of? at like places like, you know, minimum wage jobs paid more than the comics did. Heck, you can go to Walmart and get paid like more than I got paid subbing. So I'm like, just do that. I, I don't understand. That's what I'm saying. Like these people are so afraid. They actually think that they're lording over other people. We're going to blacklist you from the comic book industry. You might actually be saving somebody's ass by pushing them out of the comic book industry so they go get a job someplace else and then that when actually they do pays go, them. When they do go do things like crowdfunders that do really well, then they're pissed about it. Then they're salty. And it's like, but you, it's your because own they didn't have Good job. Because they didn't have the balls to do it or they didn't have the audience well, no, to but do they, it. Yeah, they didn't have the audience, but they pushed them out and then they go and, and then destroy all kinds of numbers on crowdfunders and then they're mad about it. It's like, you know what? You did it to yourself. I, yeah, Congrats. pretty much. I, you, you got you got what you wanted. There you go. You can have it. You can so have you it. You can have all of it. You can have it. And everything that comes with it. Yes. Yes, exactly. You have the empire of dirt. All right. That's that's here you go. Congratulations, guys. This is all yours. All of it. You can have it all. I'm I'm out. We're gonna go do our own shit and make some money. It's hopefully. Gonna wrap it up. Yep. Uh please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.